Well, as you can see, Kavi Solokol has joined us on set, which means that this story has moved forward. Uh, Kavi, what is the latest breaking news with this? Yes, there has now been a bid from Qatar uh, for Manchester United. Just in the last few minutes, uh, I've been told that Sheikh Jasim bin Hamad Al Thani has made a substantial bid for Manchester United. He's the chairman of one of the biggest banks in Qatar, uh, QIB Bank. Uh, he was also on the board of Credit Suisse, uh, a big uh, Swiss bank. I'm being told that he is a lifelong Manchester United supporter and that the club will be owned if he wins the right to buy Manchester United through a foundation called the 92 Foundation. I think it's named after the class of 92. And his vision for the club, I'm being told, is an emphasis on youth and also on putting money and investment into both the men's team and the women's team. And he also wants to redevelop uh, Old Trafford. Uh, there will be a new stadium. There will be redevelopment of the whole area around uh, Old Trafford as well. And crucially, I know this is very important for Manchester United fans. Uh, this deal, if he buys Manchester United, will be totally debt free. So we won't have the situation we've had with the Glazer family where uh, they bought the club in a leveraged buyout and the club has been uh, paying more than a billion pounds uh, to service that debt, which is still, I think, around 500 million pounds. This deal will be debt free. Uh, also, I've been able to find out uh, Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani is the son of the former Prime Minister of Qatar. There was lots of talk that maybe the former Prime Minister, his father, uh, would be bidding for Manchester United, but it is not his father, it is him. Do you think Manchester United fans will be excited by this prospect? You said that they want to invest uh, and bring the... The, the team back to its former glories. Is this an exciting time for Manchester United fans? Look, I think you have to be, uh, you know, you, you have to ask a lot of questions. You have to ask the questions, uh, why does somebody want to buy Manchester United? What's in it for them? Are they really uh, a Manchester United supporter? Do they want to make money out of it? Do they want to boost their profile? Do they want to boost the profile of Qatar? This evening, everything I'm being told is positive news for Manchester United supporters. Now, I'm not saying you should go out and dance on the streets and celebrate because the Qataris are coming. You've still got to ask more and more questions. But everything I'm being told is the deal is going to be debt free. Uh, there's going to be money made available uh, for the manager, uh, new stadium, new training ground, redevelop the area around Old Trafford, emphasis on youth because that's what Manchester United has been historically uh, about. No debt. And I'm also being told that any profits that are made uh, from uh, Sheikh Al Thani owning Manchester United, he will put back into the club and into the 92 Foundation. So he doesn't want to make any money out of this at all. He's not doing it to make money. Uh, he's doing it because he's a Manchester United supporter, a lifelong Manchester United supporter, I'm being told. Now, I know from your face, <laughs> you're thinking he may have ulterior motives. Why? Uh, would Qatar want to buy Manchester United? Again, I'm being told this evening that this is not Qatar buying Manchester United. Obviously, people will ask questions. Uh, Qatar Sports Investments own PSG. Will they be allowed to own another football club? I'm being told this has got nothing to do with QSI. This is a, a, a private deal. This is somebody who has a lot of money and he wants to buy uh, Manchester United. Yeah, and Kavi, as you're speaking, I'm being told that you know, the share value is going up and up and up. You were talking about it a little earlier as well in terms of these bids and the potential sale and the impact it's having on the value of Manchester United. Just explain a little bit about that and the impact that these bids are having. Yeah, I, mean, I think basically what's happened is since the Glazers said in November that they were effectively putting the club up for sale, uh, the Manchester United share price has doubled. It was around $13. It's now around $26 today, uh, which means that according to the New York Stock Exchange, Manchester United is worth uh, $4.4 billion, which is £3.6 billion. So the value of the club has effectively doubled since November. Now, some people would say that the Glazer family have 
almost reach the point of no return. Because if they were now to turn around and say, we're not going to sell Manchester United, we've changed our mind, that share price is going to plummet. So Manchester United at the moment is worth more than it's ever been worth before. And I asked the question this evening, this is the question that everybody wants answered. How much is this bid from Qatar? We need to have the number. Uh, and I'm being told that that is confidential information, but we should be looking at a figure of what Manchester United is worth at the moment, according to the New York Stock Exchange. So. I don't have any hard information about what the bid is, uh, but I was told uh, over the last couple of days that the Qataris wouldn't overpay for Manchester United. So I think my best estimate would be that it would be somewhere uh, between maybe three and a half billion pounds and four and a half billion pounds. Uh, 4.5 billion pounds is a figure that has been mentioned to me, but I don't have uh, any reliable uh, concrete information about the size of the bid. I mean, either way, it sounds like it's going to be an eye-watering amount of money. Carvey, people will see this and they will see that a Qatari-owned company or a, a person of Qatari nationality wants to own this club. Will there be concerns about human rights? Will there be concerns, as there have been, when other groups have taken over football clubs like this? I think there will be, yes, of course. Uh, you know, we saw all the concerns around the World Cup being held uh, in Qatar. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, concerns about human rights, migrant workers' rights, LGBTQ plus rights as well. Uh, but again, the information I have this evening is that Manchester United, if uh, Sheikh Al Thani buys the club, will be open to everybody. Uh, I think they've seen some of the statements that have been put out today and they want to make it clear that it will be a club for everybody. Everybody is welcome and they want to stress that the money they will put into the club will not just be going into the men's team. They also want to develop the women's team as well. We should be looking at this in the whole. As I said, a lot of what I'm hearing tonight is very, very good news if you're a Manchester United supporter. Uh, it, it sounds like Christmas and your birthday all rolled into one. But of course, you know, uh, a lot of people say the right things. We've got to keep asking the questions. And I totally understand that a lot of people will have concerns. But I'm also being told that, look, Sheikh uh, Al Thani, he is the chairman of one of the biggest banks uh, in Qatar, QIB. Uh, I was in Qatar for the World Cup, QIB branches everywhere. Uh, he was on the board of Credit Suisse, one of the biggest, uh, most prestigious banks in the world. Uh, so I don't think he would have any problems uh, passing any sort of fit and proper person's test uh, to own a football club. We've seen a, a trend in the Premier League where you know, big money takeovers of, of Premier League clubs, Chelsea, Newcastle. Is this going to be the way of things? Is it going to be now that all these top clubs that want to compete at the top level, win the trophies, are going to have to be taken over by billionaires to be able to compete? I mean, that's a very, very good point. I think uh, the Premier League... Uh, is basically a global super league. Uh, you know, we saw people trying to set up a European super league uh, that fell apart in a matter of days. And you speak to a lot of people at other clubs around Europe and they just feel that the Premier League has now mm. become so big mm. that it effectively is a, a super league. And the kind of sums being spent on transfers and also uh, people bidding to buy uh, the clubs are eye-watering. You know, we've never seen numbers like this before and you've got to think whatever you think about the Glazers if they manage to sell Manchester United for anything like four or five billion pounds they will have pulled off an incredible investment I mean they bought Manchester United uh, what was it 17 years ago mm -hmm. in a leveraged buyout I think they only put in 150 200 million pounds of their own money Whoa. Uh, the rest of the money, I think they bought United in a deal that was worth £790 million. They've only put in £150-£200 million of their own money and that investment they could potentially turn into four, five billion pounds and I think a lot of that will be tax-free because they moved Manchester United's registered office from Old Trafford uh, to the Cayman Islands. Yeah. Uh, what about issues of competition as well, though, Cabby? We touched on it briefly before. Um, in terms of Qatari ownership in particular and them owning 
other clubs. Where does that kind of come into play? We were talking a little bit about the fact that they own PSG. Mm. What does that mean in terms of competition going forward? And just the amount of clubs that they could end up owning, even if they say it's separate ownership. I'm, I'm being told that uh, Sheikh Al Thani is totally separate from QSI. Uh, I'm being told that th this is not an issue at all. Uh, there's no uh, rule or law in football saying that uh, you know no two Qatari nationals are allowed to own different football clubs. You know QSI own PSG. Other Qataris are free to own a another club. Now some people will think, well, nothing happens in Qatar without the say so of uh, the rulers of Qatar. Uh, is this just a way to get round the rules? The information I have tonight is that it, it, it is not. Uh, Sheikh Khaltani wants to buy Manchester United as a private individual uh, and he have, has the funds to be able to uh, buy United and restore it to its former glories, is what he's telling me. So, what's Sorry, next? Not what he's telling me, what I'm being yeah. told. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening to it. Too. I was going to say, it's, it's texting you. No, no. <laughs> what's happening right now? Um, so what's next then? We, we know that the soft deadline for, for bids was, was tonight. That bid has, has come in. How soon could the takeover be complete? Uh, when will we know figures? When will we know a, a, a timeline? I think basically what's going to happen now is uh, these bids are going into uh, the rain group today. Uh, there is, what, another hour and 45 minutes until the soft deadline. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to see whether other bids have been mm -hmm. made. Uh, we don't have information about that, although we anticipate that uh, Ineos, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, will make a bid. There'll be bids from US investors, maybe a bid from Saudi Arabia as well. Uh, over the next few days or weeks, the Rain Group will be sitting down, sifting through all those bids, talking to the Glazers uh, and deciding which ones will be the preferred bidders. And I'm being told, actually, that uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that so far, uh, the people who have registered an interest with the Rain Group and been given some information about Manchester United they haven't had detailed information. I was told a lot of the information that they've had is freely available. Anyone can go out and look for it on the internet uh, and look at company accounts. So what needs to happen is uh, the preferred bidders need to be given full access to United's uh, books and accounts because they've got to be sure uh, about what they're buying and how much it's worth. Cavi. Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much. We'll no doubt be hearing uh, a lot more from you throughout the evening. Thank you. Thanks, Carmen.